I need y'all not to judge me because I am making a hat um, today. I know I said that I probably wouldn't post a video this week, but I feel like I have to post at least one this week, um, just for consistency's sake. And also because I'm really anxious and depressed, and I've been anxious and depressed for over a week, so we have to kind of... We have to kind of just be prepared for that because now we have to do things to make ourselves less anxious and less depressed and honestly the stresses that are around me right now aren't really helping yes i am tying my hair because i am redressing a hat for davecon 2020 and if you haven't got your tickets yet and and you live in the uk i swear to fucking god i'm gonna be so mad at all of you um david Worley has tried his level best to make a bad uh, to make a a good thing out of an awful situation and honestly i am so disappointed that not that many tickets have sold so if you live in london and you would like to see me in a cowboy outfit that i'm pretty sure david is completely unaware of please get a ticket if it is even just to see me in a cowboy outfit and not just to wait for the amazing Instagram photos that will come out of it because, oh my god, what are you doing? Anyways, now that I'm done telling you off, um, there have been several uh, stresses in this week and I think I'm going to start this video by just quietly explaining what is going on with me and why so as most of you know i must have every mental health disorder in the book um i'm kidding no i don't um i have anxiety i have depression i have a significant bout of ptsd um and i recently recently a quite difficult eating disorder has resurfaced that I didn't know that was going to make a free appearance but it's here and she's a bitch um and you better believe that this video is going to be demonetized because YouTube hates us talking about any kind of mental health disorder because it's apparently not family friendly even though families are the ones that give you mental health disorders because guess what your brain and the person that you are is mostly formed in your formative years which your family does to you so all of my formative years are completely fucked and that's why we're here and we literally do not give a flying fuck today i just want to redress my hat and talk some shit this is girl chat now i'm going to pan the camera down a little bit so you can see my t-shirt this is a t-shirt that was given to me at um club carly uh w and the event that day was run by um a wonderful gay couple amir and amir who run the uh you don't love me podcast which i've been on before to talk about bisexuality and i don't often talk about my bisexuality because i felt i've always felt as though since I came out, which was last year around Pride, I always felt as though um, I didn't struggle for that identity. So I would rather people who did struggle for it talk about it, you know? Um, and because I didn't struggle for it, I think that me sort of plastering on that label is just not for me it's just not for me i'm never gonna be one of those people that introduces themselves as bi other identities that i have like being an atheist and things like that yeah i, st I heavily struggle for that so i'm more good talking about that but when people ask me to talk about my sexuality i'm just like yeah i kind of fuck everybody it doesn't really matter um someone that i would like to uh shout out for talking about bisexuality and bi visibility and just LGBT uh, rights in general. One, he's not bi, he's gay uh, and he is my husband. Yeah, I can see why that's confusing. Don't ask questions. Um, is Jimmy. That's the first person that I will say that if you want to hear about LGBT rights, go talk to Jimmy because Jimmy 
is the best person on the planet um, at this current time, and I would argue at any time, because Jimmy, Jimmy is just amazing. He's just wonderful, and I love him, and I stand him, and anyone who, as we have seen from my run against Farhan, uh, will probably tell you, anyone who even tries to fucking come for my man, I will cut a hoe. I will, I'm in a mood today, so y'all gonna have to just deal with that. Um, additionally, someone else that I would like to just shout out for a second is a young man called v Vinit Mehta. Uh, he was on that by podcast with me, and he's been doing this for much longer than I have, and I feel as though he has a lot of interesting insights into like that whole world and if you want to hear about a person's true struggle coming to terms with their sexuality i would really really suggest that you go and check him out uh his name is vinit mehta if i'm not mistaken his twitter handle is nintendo mad 666 if that's not or 888 if that's not it i'll i'll leave it in the description you can go and check him out um but yeah so what we're doing is uh, so I've already redressed the top. That took the least amount of time. And yes, you can see the back stitches because I don't give a fuck. Um, but uh, w the reason why... Okay, so where the fuck did this hat come from, Faye? Can you stick to one topic? No, I can't. My brain is everywhere today. Um, and why, in, in the god that you don't believe in's name, are you redressing a hat today on a video and talking absolute fucking nonsense? So, I'm going to talk about this hat first. So, where did this hat come from? This hat was given to me by my wonderful best friend, Alicia, and she just gives me all the passion and the zeal and the comfort and the love and support that I by no means deserve. Um, and she found this hat because she's been in this uh, little... Uh, phase where she's like clearing out her room and her house and her wardrobes and she's just decluttering her life and I would uh, I would like really suggest that for anybody because it's so because when I did it I felt as though uh so much of my life had been fixed um and you know my room looks so much fresher and cleaner and it's just brighter and wonderful so uh, she's now doing that and she found this hat that she had gotten in Blackpool uh, Many many years ago and she was like I found well the way that she introduced it She was just like I found something that you would really like and I was like, okay You already gave me like two different presents for my birthday. I don't need you to keep coddling me um, But she always does because she's she's my best friend. She's my, basically my sister um, but uh, you know, and not like a, a sister that you constantly compete with. She's just my chill, wonderful, you know, I'm going to take care of you no matter what kind of sister. I don't care if you deserve it or not. It doesn't matter because in my eyes, I love you and I respect you and I care for you and I watch all of your videos and I still don't, I still can't believe that I've gotten so lucky by finding a friend like Alicia. Um, and she just, she just brings out the best in me, to be honest. Um, and yeah, so she found this hat and she was like, I really think that you would like it, but it is pink and it does have like a, a tin foil frill that you're going to have to remove. And I did try my level best to remove it, but I, that's as far as I could get. So it also had like a little tiara on the top. So I had to pick that off as well. And as, as you would expect, it was all hot glued on there. Um, so there's like a significant amount of glue on this hat that I just can't get off. But you know what? 2020, we're DIYing and we're doing our best to just... Oh, I've made a hot mess here. Look at this. Pins. Pins galore. Why didn't you just thread them through? Because it's kind of hard to thread pins through this felt fabric. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to start fucking sewing um without y'all's judgment uh anyways um so mental health why is Faye suffering <sighs> why is Faye suffering Faye doesn't know why she's suffering um so I've had anxiety and depression for a while I've 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 
lived with that for a, quite a while. Um, I'm pretty sure that the wild started in my teenage years, which, as most people know, are quite formative years. Um, you know, they really... Oh, shit. This is what I mean. Like, it's really hard to sew through felt, and I wish that I could just point the camera down, but I don't want to. Because my life is shitty, so why should my video content be any different? Um, yeah, if you couldn't tell, I'm very bitter today. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've had depression for quite a while. Um, since I was a young kid, uh, you know, my schedule for doing anything was just non-existent. Um, my schedule was basically just going to school and then having an awful time because I was the weird kid and I was bullied for being the weird kid, also bullied for being the fat kid, um, because I went to a girl's school, and for those of you who are s thinking about sending your children to a single-sex school, please don't. It's a horrible environment for anybody and everybody. And as someone who's always been a tomboy and always hung out with my male uncles and my male cousins, it was not fun for me to suddenly be sent to a female hell where... I had to pretend to like One Direction when music was completely haram. I also went to an Islamic school. That is also a terrible idea. See my video about it. I'm not going to talk about it here because I don't need that in my life right now. Um, but, where was I? Yeah. So, depression, anxiety, I feel like I've... No, well, depression I've had for a long time. Anxiety was more recent. I feel like anxiety developed in the last five, maybe six years. Uh, so that would have come around the death of my mother because I couldn't um, just sort of, I, I couldn't just be depressed about that, you know. I, I, had, I had all these coping mechanisms that some of them were healthier than others, admittedly. One of my coping mechanisms was not eating to, in a very stoic and stupid manner, um, it was just to, and I still do this, and this is why I have this eating disorder, is to um, find what is essential to life for me. So, for example, to give you a brief example by what the fuck I mean by that, um, on Sunday, if an, and if it wasn't Sunday, it was a Monday, I can't tell at this point, um, it's half term right now, so there's no work for me, and you'd think that I would take that time to just relax, put my feet up, and be, ch be chill, be cool, but no, uh, I am taking that time to freak out because I can't do that while I'm in school um, around a bunch of kids who need my love and care and attention and support. So I've, I've had this depression spell since last Thursday and it wasn't as severe as it was on Monday and Tuesday, but on Monday or Sunday evening, uh, I can't remember which, I'm, I'm fairly sure it was Sunday evening, I went over to Alicia's house because I told her, look, I'm feeling really awful and I need to go outside because I've been inside all weekend. And um, if I don't come to see you right now, I'm scared that I'm going to be in my house for the whole of the half term. And she was like, okay, sure, like, you know, you can come over. You don't need to ask me, which is real and true. And I appreciate that very much. But I always feel like I'm imposing on people. So I have to ask. I just always have to ask. Uh, and I know anyone who, who knows me in real life and sees my content is going to be like, what the fuck, you could have just come over to our houses as well. And for that, I have to deeply say thank you, and also, you know me. I wasn't about to just turn up at your house. Never, that's never, ever going to be the case, ever. Um, so, I go to Alicia's house. Uh, well, no, actually, I get ready to go to Alicia's house. I put on a full face of makeup because I feel awful and hideous. And before anybody says anything about that, I need y'all to just... Shh. Okay, it's beauty is a state of mind. Okay, beauty is not only subjective, it is also a state of mind. And I felt hideous. I still feel hideous. Um, so I put on a full face of makeup and I... Like, I was so afraid that I was going to just end up trapped in my house for the whole of the half term, that I ran out into the middle of Storm Dennis, which is currently still going on, uh, without a coat. Without a coat. And 
Alicia saw me when I came to her house and it was a bit of an adventure going to her house because the trains weren't running so it felt like the universe was against me and I understand I understand I've read your fucking emails okay I understand how narcissistic that sounds like who the fuck do you think you are I know okay I know I understand how awful that sounds but it literally felt like the universe was against me because none of the trains were working and I took a um a rail replacement bus all the way to fucking Stonebridge, which is not how, which is not where Alicia lives. Sorry, I'm getting like progressively more reckless and angry. Um, and then I had to take a rail replacement bus back. Uh, so yeah, <sighs> I just pricked myself with a needle. Can you see that? No, nope, because it's not focusing. But I think you can get the gist. Mm, there's gonna be blood on this hat. I didn't prick myself on the pin, I pricked myself on the needle that I'm sewing on, sewing with. But yeah, self-harm, like physical self-harm, like with blades and scissors and stuff like that. Sorry, I should probably should have put a trigger warning. Um, has never been a coping mechanism for me. Uh, I did, uh, I did dabble in like pretty heavily pulling out my hair and, um, like scratching myself but I've never taken a blade to my flesh like that's never happened um but this eating disorder thing has been around for a while I have to say because I used to do that when I was in my dad's house uh quite a bit because I feel like when I get sad like this I feel awful feeling bad so I need to remind myself that the things that I'm sad about isn't valid and that's like a really unhealthy way of being um i know that because i tell my kids that uh, but somehow i can't practice that myself um so yeah it's just it's just shit because no one fully understands what i mean when i say that like i'm depressed and i can't explain it so for the first two days in alicia's house she was basically babysitting me which i wholly appreciate by the way um because sometimes even though I don't want to be babysat I just need to be babysat um and she babysat me you know we watched uh, a couple of movies we watched white chicks she made sure I was eating things like that which you know I just fly the first thing that flies out the window when I'm depressed is my food schedule I just don't eat when I'm depressed I just don't eat um I have been eating mostly this week um at least one meal a day which a lot of people might argue is not enough but for someone who has literally gone days without food because i need to find what's essential to life <sighs> i'm so mad at myself uh because i need to find what's essential to life um it, it's honestly it's not that bad it's not that bad it's been worse um I've been having at least one meal a day. My brain is kind of all over the place, which is exactly how it was um, on Monday and Tuesday, but it was worse because your girl is Saki and she likes talking and she's honestly, she's honestly quite loud sometimes. Um, but Monday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday morning, I could barely say a few words. Like I could barely get a few words out. Um, I didn't have any hot takes. I didn't have any sarcastic comments to make. I was just gone. Like I wasn't even here. Um, the world had just lost Faye Raman. Faye Raman just was not on the planet Sunday and Monday ma mainly. But we went out. She took me outside. We went to Harrow. We bought a few supplies like this, this, um, covering for my hat. We got that. Um, and a few other things because we want to have a Halloween party this year um, and I'm really really hoping that it goes through because I'm actually quite excited to make the set uh, I'll explain another time about that we got some we were looking for some supplies for our comic-con costumes later in the year which I will post photos of uh, once comic-con rolls around in May um, but I had to go to an event on Tuesday uh, Ali Malik was doing uh, a, a little CEMB meeting um, and uh, he wanted me to appear for that. So 
I obliged, you know, I, I, she, Alicia kind of asked me, like, are you sure you want to go, like, you're not, you're not in the best headspace to be going anywhere and seeing people, and I kind of went, well, I kind of committed to going, like, I said I would go, so I'm gonna go, and I haven't seen Ali in a really long time, and I don't know if he's mad at me, um, you know, that's it, because I haven't spoken to him since, like, last year, so I need to go and see what's good, like, I need to go and confront uh, my deepest and darkest fear, that being that Ali Malik t t hates me, um, so that's what I'm gonna do, and she was like, I'm sure he doesn't hate you, and you're just, like, making it up in your brain, and I was like, look, my whole family has abandoned me, I have abandonment issues, just let me let me go do my thing, you know, I, I need to solve this for myself, so let me do it, and she was like, I'm not stopping you, um, so I went to that event, and it was really great, we got a couple of drinks afterwards, uh, I think we stayed out until like 4 a.m., uh, I didn't drink too much, I definitely could have drank more, um, but Ali was, so I didn't actually intend on drinking, I went to the meeting and I didn't drink anything, because I knew Ali wanted to take me out, because uh, he is very remorseful about missing my birthday. I don't even know why, because I missed his. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he he seemed to regret quite deeply that he missed my birthday. So I kind of knew that I was going to be drinking that night. So at the meetup, I didn't drink anything. Um, and I only had a couple drinks uh, with them. I made some new friends. We, we hit up like three or four bars. Um, and yeah, then I came home at like 4 a.m., which was nice. Uh, and then the next day I was just recovering from not sleeping that entire night. And I got hit with a lot of not great news. I can't say all of it because it's not my news to share. Uh, it's just news from other people in our circle, in our community, who are going through a couple of tough, t uh, a bit of a rough time. The one thing that I can share is the whole um, Little Devil incident. Uh, so Sophia, who is Little Devil on Twitter, for those of you who follow me on Twitter and follow the ex-Muslim community on Twitter, she has gone through quite a lot in the last year. Um, you know, she left her house. Uh, she's from an ex, she's an ex-Muslim. She's from like a quite a, um, a precarious, she left quite a precarious situation because her father was quite abusive and um, we had a little bit of a suicide scare and y'all who have followed me for a while may know that I've had my fair share of dealing with people who've attempted suicide and it's a very it's a very touchy subject for me because I was witness to one when I was 19 or 20 uh, I can't remember exactly but it happened in 2015 um, I don't know, y'all will have to calculate it for me. The years are a blur at this point. Um, but it was really scary because um, I try to stay off Twitter as much as possible. Uh, I, I've mentioned this before, like my use of social media is extremely selfish because I just post what I have to say and then I just kind of leave because I understand that it's not the best tool for me to use when I'm upset and I'm just trying to deal with my own emotions. But people were kind of contacting me left and right like have you heard from Sophia like what's going on with Sophia have you heard from little devil like what's going on with little devil she's um she made this post and we don't know what to do about it um so yeah I, I uh was freaking out almost all of yesterday and I know I really shouldn't make it about me but I'm I'm gonna because I'm kind of perturbed uh, by it and for those of you who are wondering how she's doing I've heard from apostate prophet who I'm so glad he uh, contacted me and was like hey you know Sophia right and I was like yeah I'm really worried about her um, I'm so glad he contacted me because then I, I he was able to get through to the local PD and um, I'm I'm told that she's being taken care of uh, over there in the United States of fucking America, um, so, yeah, that's, that's what, ow, that's what we have going, and do I need to use a fucking thimble, like, what the fuck, um, sorry, um, 
So yeah, I'm being told that she is being taken care of. She's fine. You don't need to worry about her. Um, I'm certainly trying not to uh, because I was worried about her all evening. I was calling her all evening and I could see, I, I could see the signs that she was okay because she was like turning off her notifications and she was locking her Twitter account. So I could see that she was fine by some degree, but also, uh, I was just worried because I didn't know to what degree she had at that point hurt herself. Um, and there's, there was a part of me that just, you know, needed to know, uh, and wanted to know because I just desperately wanted to help her. Uh, and she wasn't letting me, um, and I am kind of disappointed that there were a few people in our community that was just, that was like, just give us space. And I'm not going to name those people because I love and care about them. But when someone says that they're going to attempt suicide, you do not give them space. That is a precarious situation. It is intensely dangerous to give them space in that situation. And I fully resent that. And I'm kind of mad about it. Please, if you ever hear someone saying that I am thinking about taking my own life for whatever reason and you want to save them, you want to save them, you have the intention of saving them, do not by any means give them space. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Moving on. Am I coming off as like really bitchy? I'm sorry. I'm just like, I'm mad. I'm mad because I was meant to take this week for myself and I don't care if I'm sounding selfish right now, but I'm really upset that someone just went out of their way to basically say, oh, don't worry about her. She'll be fine. Even though she just basically put up a suicide note, give her space. Like I'm mad about that. Don't do that. Do not do that. If you want to save somebody from harming themselves to the point of death, you do not give them space. I feel like that's common sense, but clearly not. Anyways, um, I tried to get through to the local PD in the States where she is. Uh, I passed it on to quite a few people. I passed it on to Abdullah Samir. I passed it on to uh, Ridvan or Apostate Prophet, I passed it on to, I believe uh, Yasmin Muhammad was on it as well, we were kind of um, collaborating on this on this thing um, because she was trying to get a hold of her but Sophia had, um, she had changed her number quite recently and Yasmin only had the old one so she was like, you're saying that the line is blocked but mine keeps going to voicemail, like what is going on? And I said, oh you probably have the old number, let me give you the new number. Um, and we collectively, EXMNA, Apostate Prophet, me, Abdullah Samir, and Yasmin Muhammad with her connections, and um, Kat Parker, uh, who was also on, in on this as well, we kind of collectively got in contact with the local police, and she, from what I've heard, uh, don't, you know, quote me on this, but from what I've heard, she's being taken care of, and I'm really glad for that and I'm also quite grateful to this community to for, to, for taking um, such things seriously because if I was in the, a situation like that where you know I'd say god forbid but I don't believe in one um, you know I was in a situation where I was so messed in my own mind that I wanted to take my own life I would be the one thing that would make me want to do it even more is people telling me that I'm going to give you your space. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. Sorry, I just want to really bring that home. Now, we're not going to be dumb. So we've done the part of the top bit. So the top bits now, like this part is covered. But I'm going to um, extend it to the bottom because it's a curved hat. So... We're gonna, this is gonna go on for ages, by the way. You don't have to be here for the full hour, but if you want to, that's up to you. Um, we're gonna cover the bottom as well. Um, I did debate doing this as a live stream, but I honestly, I'm not in the right mind for y'all's fucking opinions right now. Um, so yeah, uh, we're not doing that. Um, <sighs> sorry, but yeah, I'm just like. 
my brain is empty. I felt like I spent so much of yesterday just talking to people when I should have been doing nothing, like literally doing nothing. And um, like, I'm not mad about that. I don't want people to shy away from calling me if they need me. I just can't believe that so many things went wrong yesterday without like me even even wanting them to. Like, what did I do? What the fuck did I do yesterday to just... My brain is wrong clean. Like, I don't even understand how any of yesterday happened. Um, and to an extent, I don't know if I want to understand it or if there's a point in understanding it because, like... Mm. I feel like... Am I doing this right? I think I'm doing this right. Yeah, this is all straight, so I'm definitely doing this right. Um, I just feel like sometimes the whole world is against me, and I know that that's a ridiculous belief to hold, but it's true. Like, I sometimes I just feel like, why do I try, you know? Why do I try when everything is just going to constantly and repeatedly just mess with me? Why do I try? Um, I mean, you could, there have been quite a few people who have been like congratulating me and that's not why I do it. That's not what I want. I just, I'm kind of mad at Sophia as well because I knew she could see that I was calling her and she just didn't pick up. Like, is that bad? Is that bad that I feel upset about that? I don't know. Um, I just hope she's okay. That's At the end of the day, none of that other stuff matters. I just hope she's okay. But also, like, why do I feel mad about it? Like, why am I upset that... I don't know. I don't know. She's my friend and I care about her and I feel like so many of the people around me do their level best to take care of me, you know, because I'm their friend. And then I'm like sitting here and I'm wondering, is this what they feel when I'm the absolute worst to myself? Is this what you feel? Do you just feel like angry? Because if that's true, I'm going to do so much better at at just addressing my problems because for your sake, not even for my sake, you know, because this is a really shit way to feel like I just helped somebody, but I feel awful because I'm making it about me and I shouldn't make it about me and I shouldn't make it about me. It's not about me. It's about her, you know, and I, I, I shouldn't feel mad. I feel like I shouldn't feel mad, but I do. I don't know. I don't know. This is going to be a mess of a video. I'm so sorry. Most of the time when I do girl chats, they are meant to make people out there in the ether. Because when I was, you know, stuck in my home and I had no friends and I felt like nobody understood me. Boo-hoo. Faye having a little pity party for herself. Um, when I was like that, I used to watch YouTube videos to keep me company. I, th I felt as though it was the only way that I could feel like I was sharing time with other people because I didn't get to share time with other people. I only had me and my siblings that I had to take care of and my awful, inhumane, stupid father. Um, and yeah, I don't know. And I make these videos to make people feel less lonely. Like, girl, t girl chat is just me talking nonsense so that y'all have some time with somebody that you like and you like spending time with. But I honestly, I feel like I'm being like a petty little bit of bitch right now um, because I'm angry that someone who was in crisis didn't pick up my call because I wanted to help them. Um, that's another thing. Stop hailing me as a saviour because it, it gives me a very serious case of imposter syndrome and that's not what I need right now. It really isn't. 
Like I just, I'm the worst is what I'm telling you. I am the literal fucking worst. And I just, I don't want to feel, I don't want to feel like I'm a savior. Please don't treat me like one. It's just not something that I'm ready for. Um, even if you might think that that's how I should be hailed, please stop because it makes me feel weird and gross because that's not why I did it and I don't want to be treated as the, I don't want it to be treated as though that's why I did it, you know? Um, anyways, uh, I don't know if this is going to turn out good, but. I'm doing what I always do when I get anxious or when I'm like not feeling great about myself. It's I'm doing the one thing that I'm good at and that's keeping my hands busy. Um, keeping my hands busy in the past, like when I was going through some of the worst struggles in my life, um, it always like made me feel like I was doing something useful, especially when I was, you know, especially when my mom was uh, dying and, you know, in situations like that, there's nothing you can do except be helpful and sometimes there is no way of being helpful especially when someone's dying um and i used to keep my hands busy i used to write i used to um draw uh and i felt awful about both of them because drawing is haram as hell um but you know it made me feel better and that's that's the takeaway here. This is just Faye trying to make herself feel better because she feels honestly like an awful human being. Um, she doesn't entirely know why and she knows she's going to be told off for saying that. Um, and a lot of people are going to view that as Faye just fishing for compliments when she genuinely, genuinely is just depressed as hell and doesn't know what to do with herself. Um, because she has friends who are genuinely hurting and suffering and nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck but her. Um, and I, like, I don't know. I don't know how to help my friends and I don't know how to help me. So I'm just trying to feel useful here. Does that make sense? I'm so sorry if this, like, turns a lot of people off and a lot of people are just like, what is wrong with you? Like, you need to stop doing this where you punish yourself for just being yourself. And then there are other people who'll be like, oh, you need Jesus. And I'll just be like, no, I don't. <sighs> what I need is for people to understand simple things like just simple things just really really simple things like not giving someone who's attempting suicide space like that like i think i'm the most mad about that um It's been a long week and I've barely done anything this week. Like, it's been a long fucking week and I don't even feel like I've done much, you know? Like, I've been trying my best to just keep my schedule empty and do nothing because I need that. My mental health and the state that it's in needs that. These, like, issues that I'm having now have been ongoing since September and the NHS has only just decided, you know what? We need to take care of this. Something that I have been saying since last September. Do you hear me? Like, I have been going through this for an extended period of time and it's only just being taken seriously. My appointment is tomorrow. Um, so for all y'all who are like, oh, you need help, I'm getting it, I'm trying, I've been trying since September, and it's just not been taken seriously, you know? And it's, it's not even that I wasn't trying before, I was, but because everything here kind of takes a while to be taken seriously, it just isn't, it just isn't. 
and it's it's been my brain has been unattended to for what six months six months six months ago i i wanted to get back on antidepressants because i said you know what last time it worked and i know how to wean myself off them if i don't need them anymore and i wanted to get into psychotherapy and um i wanted to have my eating disorder that's recently resurfaced six months ago just solved like i just wanted to get it sorted and dusted and i just i just wanted some help like that's what i went in for and it just wasn't addressed it just wasn't they sent me one letter saying that saying that I was out of the catchment area and that I needed to reapply. So I reapplied and I never heard from the service that is in my area. And then I told my GP around December, but then Christmas rolled around and none of it got taken care of, like literally none of it got taken care of. Um, and then what happened then? And then February rolled around and I was feeling a little better, so I just didn't didn't bother, really. I was like, oh, maybe it's gone. But now it's come back and I'm really regretting that. And they're, they're taking it seriously now. So at least there's that, right? Can I just say something? I have always welcomed, you know, contrary opinions on my channel. And I always will, because I genuinely think that a contrary opinion, even, in, e even if you're wrong, even if you're just absolutely undeniably wrong, is the food of life. And we need contrary opinions to continue existing. But some of y'all who take it out of your day to tell me what to do with my life and make assertions about my mental health when it was not asked for, you need to stop doing that. Like, obviously, I can't control what you do on the internet and how you choose to comment but i need you to stop doing that because my way of self-care is in jeopardy because of it my method of and i'm by no means saying that it works i don't think it does personally the way that i'm choosing to take care of myself i know it doesn't work but I need you to understand that when you make helpful suggestions to me, it doesn't help me because you can't tell me what to do. I went through an entire life of being told what to do and I have broken that way of living. And now when people tell me what to do, I don't see it as them being helpful. I see it as a threat and I don't like that about me, but I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what I feel when you do things like that. Um, so I need you to stop. I just need you to, if you really want to help me, the way that you help me is by wishing me well and telling me that, you know, just telling me that I'll be fine. Maybe that's not the best way of going about it. I don't know. All I'm saying is, is when I see a comment, that is sitting around not knowing me and telling me how I should be and what I should do for my mental health that I have been living with for all of my life. By the way, just for your information, when I see a comment telling me what to do, it just rubs me the wrong way. And I can't, suddenly I can't be nice about that. Like, I can't just be like, oh, yeah, I'll take your suggestion. Because I've lived with people's suggestions my whole life. And honestly, they are no longer welcome here. And I don't like them. 
And no matter how pure your intentions are, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. Because I'm stubborn. And it's reinforcing my stubbornness. And I would really prefer if, you know, you didn't do that to me. Because I don't want to be a stubborn person. But it, it makes me want to be a stubborn person when I see people telling me how to live my life. video is just going to be Faye being an awful person for 40 minutes straight while doing textiles. So I've covered this portion of the hat. I know it's looking a little janky right now, but we'll fix it. Don't worry. Um, yeah, we're going to continue. I'm going to try and finish this off camera, but Anyone who doesn't fully understand what depression is and how it works, like, I am no expert. I'm going to wear my hat for the rest of this. I am no expert on depression. Um, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. But as someone who is currently going through it and has gone through it for a lot of my teenage years, um, I just want to say that, for me anyway, it's part sadness, but it's mostly anger and confusion and not knowing what to do with it and how to manage it. And I could open up my laptop and write a heartfelt story, um, you know, of anything and everything just to get it out. But I also, I thought that in the same way that I, you know, filmed my existential crisis video, I thought that this would be a helpful way of expressing exactly what I'm feeling because that's what I'm feeling I'm feeling angry and I'm feeling shitty for being angry and I'm feeling sad and I'm feeling shitty for feeling sad and also a severe case of not fully being able to organize my thoughts a significant brain fog and just I'm done had it with the world just I want to sit here and just do and that's it. I'm sorry if this video was too bitter for your taste. It was too salty for your taste. Um, I'm gonna just try and dedicate the rest of my day, because I have nothing planned, my day to finishing this hat, because this seems to bring me a significant level of pleasure that I otherwise would not have felt and I don't genuinely I don't care how this turns out I just want to do it and I just want to continue feeling this way because I'm mad at everything else I'm just angry at everything else I'm angry at people that I don't want to be angry at and I'm angry at events that I shouldn't be angry at but yeah I will Hopefully in a better mood to see you on Sunday for a live stream because there isn't going to be another video upload this week. <sighs> Goodbye.